7 o'clock. Would you all please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Council President Bernard? Here. District 1 Morset? Here. District 2 Yaku? Here. District 4 Wyland? Here. District 5 Hoggett? Here. District 6 Vanslow? Here. Uh, we're at the point in our agenda where we take comments and suggestions from citizens present on items that are not on tonight's agenda. If you have anything you'd like to speak to that's not on the agenda tonight, this is your opportunity. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Good evening. I'm Andrea Jorgensen from the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau. And I'm here tonight to welcome the community and surrounding area of Hudson to the Christmas Tour of Homes and Crafts Sale. It's coming up no the weekend of November 18th through the 20th. The event will kick off with our Dazzle Tour, which will be held Friday night, where our community comes out to see the homes as they sparkle and shine. There are five homes on the tour, as usual, including also the historic Octagon House. Um, we also, <laughs> on Saturday and Sunday, We'll be having the traditional tour, which includes those homes as well, and also an arts and crafts sale up at the Best Western Hotel. I'd like to invite everybody to come out as well for the black tie event. The deadline for tickets to purchase those are this November 10th. Uh, it's a special evening and a special night. Please call the chamber for more information. Um, and I'd also like to... Uh, let the community know that we're getting ready to celebrate the holidays here in Hudson with many events coming up, including our annual Night Up Light and Reindeer in the Park, to name a few. So please come on out. We invite you to join us in downtown Hudson and surrounding areas. Thank you. Sounds great. Anyone else who'd like to speak to an item not on the agenda? All right, with that, uh, if we could hear the consent agenda items, please. To approve the regular meeting minutes of October 18th, 2011. To approve the certified survey map proposed by Mr. Bill Cornwall, creating one one-family residential lot and one outlot for the property at 327 7th Street South. To approve, approve claims for payment in the amount of $823,418.12. Additional information is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of one regular operator's license for the period November 8, 2011 to June 30, 2013 to Timothy L. Johnson, 1706 Fairway Drive, Hudson, Wisconsin. To authorize legal counsel to work with city staff on an ordinance to create a stormwater utility. Would you to pull that one, please? Oops. To approve imposing a $5 cash deposit plus court costs and surcharges for a total of $57.30 for parking violations to Chapter 235-55B as recommended by the Municipal Judge Garrity. To place on file the quarterly reports of the City Clerk and the Library Director. The semi-annual report of the Community Development Director and the October 25, 2011 minutes, meeting minutes of the Community Access Board and the October 18th, 2011 minutes of the St. Croix EMS Commission. And that is all. Move for approval. Is there a second? A second. <coughs> Roll call vote, please. Wyland? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Morset? Yes. Yakub? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Vanslow? Yes. Okay. Consent agenda is approved. Uh, moving to the first item in the agenda, uh, addresses ordinance number 20-11. Um, this is the issue that for which we had our public hearing. It's a request to rezone 1.25 acres at the southwest quadrant of Crestview Drive and Higgins Street from public to multiple family residential district. Um, Denny, would you like to speak to this, please? This uh, parcel is uh, currently owned by the city of Hudson. It's an uh, outlot that uh, basically has steep slopes and trees. The city set it aside uh, to preserve the trees and slopes on it. Um, the proposed development, which will be let, discussed later tonight for the 40-unit community-based residential facility called Comforts of Home, um, is proposing to buy the lot just immediately to the east of that site and develop uh, uh, 
the residential facility. Uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this issue, recommends approval of the uh, comprehensive plan amendment to medium density residential and the zoning to uh, uh, RM1, multiple family residential. Ordinance 20-11 uh, places that in consideration. Uh, you uh, have an opportunity or have first reading tonight or suspend the rules and consider adoption. I'll move to suspend the rules. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote. I'm sorry. Thank Keep you. Comment. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the details of the development plan in a moment, but can you at least speak before we vote on this about the stipulations that were put into the uh, development plan about the trees and slopes? To yeah, yeah the, the city, uh, we do have a signed uh, purchase agreement with uh, Gold Ridge Group in regards to this parcel. Uh, there are restrictive covenants that have been placed on. Uh, on the sale of the property and ownership of the property that trees cannot be removed and slopes greater than 12 percent cannot be graded on. The purpose of purchasing this property by Gold Ridge is to provide uh, green space for their development but also give them additional latitude for placement of facility on their, on their property that they're purchasing from um, Mr. Steve Kinney um, and it gives them a little more latitude uh, where they can place it also allows them to provide a little more additional off-street parking on the parcel. So uh, there are restricted covenants on this, which essentially keeps it in the same condition as the city ownership. Thank you. So let's vote on the motion to suspend the rules. We can take further questions, comments. All in favor of suspending the rules, vote aye. 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 Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Yeah. Bernard? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Yakub? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Vanslow? Yes. Wyland? Yes. Okay, now are there any further questions or comments on Ordinance 20-11? Move to approve Ordinance 20-11. Second. We have a motion and a second. There are no other comments or questions. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> okay, Danny, and the next item is the final development plans for Comfort of Homes, Senior Living, 40-unit community-based um, residential facility at that southwest quadrant of Hagen Street and Crestview Drive. This has also gone through Plan Commission. I'll let you speak to it further, please. Okay. The Plan Commission recommendation is to uh, recommends, approval, recommends approval of the final development plans for the 40 unit community based residential facility proposed by the Gold Ridge Group. Uh, the project is uh, entitled uh, Comforts of Home of Hudson. Uh, this project will be essentially a twin of the existing Comforts of Home facility located on Hagen Street immediately south of the proposed location. This is a 40 unit facility. Uh, the existing facility is 42 units. Again, they will have to have uh, uh, licensing through the state of Wisconsin for a community based residential facility. Uh, this uh, development will have two accesses off of Hagen Street, uh, one immediately across from the south customer entrance to the post office, then the second would be a little bit further south at, across from the post office employee entrance. Um, again, uh, meets the requirements. The city is selling the parcel immediately to the west to accommodate uh, green space and some latitude as far as placement of the building. Uh, project architect <coughs> Jamie Bowie is here tonight, uh, also the manager of, uh, of Comfort's Home is here tonight to answer any questions if, if you have questions of them. Again, Plan Commission recommends approval. Okay. Well, I'll move to approve the, uh, the Comfort of Plan Commission's recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Anyone have any questions for Danny or anyone else regarding the project? If not, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thanks, Danny. Um, jumping down to item number four under finance, application of Fiesta Loca LLC for re the reserve class B liquor license. They're located at 121 Carmichael Road, unit 106. 
Um, we all received information from Nancy regarding um, some of the additional, additional alcoholic beverage licenses that are available um, due to the recent census. There are two Class B liquor and Class B beer um, combination licenses available. That is what Fiesta Loca has applied for. Um, and if they were to be granted that license, they would relinquish their Class B beer and their Class B wine licenses. So those would become available. Um, we had discussion at finance, and there was some desire, it was a two on vote, there was some desire on the part of the committee to wait a little bit and see what other applications come in. Um, Nancy's had other inquiries um, regarding these licenses, and so there was the um, recommendation from finance is that we hold off um, for a brief time and see what other interests there may be in the licenses. How long have, have we had them published for what a week now or two weeks? Went out there. One, it was published one week, mm -hmm. but that was a couple weeks ago. I have a question. Um, the you mentioned in finance that there was a number of pack, a few other packets that went out last week, mm -hmm. right? Is there a, a holding period when once you get them back before they can come to council? They have to be on file 15 days in the clerk's office before they can come to council. Okay, so. Okay, so even they weren't able to come, they wouldn't have been able to come to council tonight if they were ready. Okay. I suggested waiting till the second meeting and or the only meeting in December. I mean, they can open up with a B and a C right now, well, or beer and a wine, so. I, and I, I tend to agree with you, especially if there's a holding period or if there's more interest and they just by the, the way the law is, they can't, we can't bring it to council quite yet. I think we're kind of jumping the gun. And I don't think it's going to hurt anything to wait a couple of weeks to see what other what what the other interests are. We don't know what the businesses are that pulled. So, Which so just to be clear, there to have a class B and C. They can open up with beer and wine right now. Okay, sir, would you like to step forward? Hi, my name is Herman Duran, and the address is uh, 131 Carmichael Road, uh, June 106. And I want to thank everybody for the wine and liquor, li I mean, wine and beer license. But uh, I um, want you guys to know that uh, we really need, uh, I mean, it'll help our business to be more successful, the liquor license, just because we are a Mexican restaurant. And uh, I mean, margaritas is a big thing with um, in the Mexican restaurant. I mean, uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks very much. One moment. Um, you all notice on your issue sheet there's information from the Municipal Code 145-11B, and it talks about some of the criteria that we are to use um, when issuing these licenses, including the number of employees and creation of new jobs proposed by the applicant, um, the, pr the possible expansion of the tax base, adequacy of parking. Um, there's a number of factors. Um, that we should consider. We're not obligated to issue, even though there's one available, we're not obligated to issue it tonight or really at any point. Um, we're free to take the applications as they come and, and address each one on its merit. Comment? Yes. Um, my name is Lon Fea. I'm the landlord uh, at the building, um, 131 Carmichael. And uh, I just wanted to point out uh, a couple of things. Herman and, and Jill. Herman was the uh, agent of record, is that what they call it? The agent of record um, at uh, uh, La Fiesta Mexicana for the last five years. They have operated a Mexican restaurant in town here with zero police calls. Well, I shouldn't say zero, um, I don't know of any. It's been a successful operation. They uh, uh, ran a very quality establishment in terms of uh, uh, problems that developed with the use of alcohol. Uh, or police calls to the building. It was a, a successful operation. They're now branching out on their own, but this is not their first rodeo. This is a, a couple who have run a successful business here in town for five years. They've now followed the rules. They've put in an application. If others haven't applied, it, I, I, it, it seems punitive to me to uh, uh, stop them from running a successful business because some applications might be forthcoming. Now, there are many factors as as miss bernard was was saying parking we have ample parking especially for the evening uh, uh supper and evening business um there is very little sit down 
business on uh, uh, restaurants on that side of of town off of Carmichael um, we're going to employ how many employees in the it will be at the uh, restaurant okay 10, 10 to 15 employees is is it uh, uh, an Applebee's no um, but this these are hard-working folks who have proved uh, uh, their resourcefulness and proved their integrity in running an establishment as the registered agent of uh, uh, holding that type of liquor liquor license already in town um, I would ask that you respectfully uh, uh, strongly consider them uh, uh, now rather rather than waiting because margaritas in a Mexican restaurant yes they could open uh, with the beer and wine um, but there's a license available there are two did I understand that there mm -hmm. are, there are two if you want to hold one for I don't want to say that if you want to wait and see if there's another applicant that's coming I see that you still have one to wait but you've got uh, uh, people with experience who are running a valid business in a part of town that needs it um, they followed all the rules they're here they've done the applications they're investing all of the money they have into this restaurant they know what they're doing they've run one for five years they've already run it successfully without problems I'm asking that you uh, uh, look seriously at their at their application for uh, a full liquor license okay thank you um, May I ask, um, yes Nancy typically in the past when we've put out um, <clears throat> Put it out, given people a chance to respond. Did we follow the process any differently this time? Or have we given people the same amount of time to respond as we have previously? It's the same as in the past. Thank you. And I think what's unique now is that we suddenly have these, um, this number of, of licenses available, which has not been the case in the past. So it's somewhat unique in that regard. It is because it's due to a population change this time rather than council changing the quota number system. Right. But so. we went through the same advertising process. Yes. Okay. Did all the applicants have the same amount of time, Yancy, to apply for this as, as Fiesta Loca? Yes. There is a waiting period after the publication is in the newspaper as well as a 15-day waiting period for when we get an application on file. So there's two 15-day waiting periods, but they can overlap. Have you received applications back, or are there just, oops, or are there just packets out? Packets have been given out, but no other applications have been received for this type of a license. It is kind of funny having a Mexican restaurant without margaritas. I, I, think that I can't disagree with that statement. I think that we followed the process and that we should uh, discuss it on its merits and vote on it. Yeah, I agree with that. We've got people here who. Um, have followed all of the rules and regulations they've got a business they want to open and I don't know that we should be restrictive of their potential success by holding back a liquor license when everyone had the same amount of opportunity to apply for it I, I don't I don't Is that know a motion that, I, that I'm hearing I, I, yeah, I don't know why I hold back uh, when everybody had the same opportunity if there was some reason other people didn't have the same opportunity I feel differently but everybody had the same opportunity and these people were first and I don't know why they shouldn't be getting the license is that a motion? I understand we want to look at the tax base. <laughs> I understand we want to look at the tax base. We want to look at the number of employees they're going to have. We want to look at the amount of revenue and generate it and all that. But I think in this case, to be fair to these people, they uh, deserve the license. Is so that I'll a motion? i make a motion to, uh, to grant the license to La Fiesta. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any other discussion? I would just, I, it does seem punitive to hold back at this point, especially when we have one more. So I, I tend to totally, or I totally agree with um, the fact that Mexican without margaritas just seems, yeah, yeah. it's, it's un-Mexican, you know. So uh, <laughs> anyway, I second. And I do need to remind you that it would need to be contingent on successful building and fire inspections. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, uh, at finance, you mentioned that, or we, it was mentioned that the um, license does not extend out to the patio, which I understand. No one's going to be out there until the summer. So if they need to expand out, if this were to get approved and they need to expand to the patio, they would just come in for an amendment. It's not, uh, okay. It's not anything that would hold anything up. Right. They just put something in writing and then we bring it back to council for approval. And they'll surrender the beer and wine before you issue 
That all depends on when they're ready to open. Because you've got it kind of like it would be no, it a combo license quota system. Well, we haven't issued anything yet. Right, that's so, what he was asking. Yeah. Right, whatever whatever is approved when they're ready to open is what we would issue. When are you planning on opening? Do you know yet? Sign was installed today. Uh, drywall's done. Um, bathrooms are coming in there within a week of opening. And how many? How much will be? How much seating will be in there? Will be available? It, it'll be uh, right around 60 on the interior, somewhere in there. Um, and then obviously the patio is sort of, you have to be pretty brave. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other questions for Nancy or business owner? All right, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And the motion carries. Congratulations, good luck on your new business. Um, down to item number six, compliance with governmental accounting standards, board requirements, resolution number 21-11. This is brought forward by Neil Soltis. And I'm not an accountant, so I'm not <laughs> gonna even try it. The governmental accounting standard board uh, promulgates rules for uh, how we report to the public and there are, <clears throat> they are mandating this change for all fiscal years beginning after July 1, 2010. So this would cover our reporting for the, fisc for the calendar year 2011. <clears throat> Essentially what this is, it really is, uh, it will only probably appear on the financial statements and the change that they're making currently, if you look at our, your fund balance on the financial statement, there are two classifications, reserved and unreserved. The change that's being mandated is that they're going to five, going to five classifications based upon the level of restrictions. Uh, the five classifications are non-spendable, restricted, committed, assigned, and unassigned. And what the resolution does is establishes, basically designates certain funds as being restricted and then for the assigned, which is essentially part of unreserved now, it would allow the city administrator to make that uh, classification. Okay. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Second roll call vote. Morissette? Yes. Yakub? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Vanslow? Yes. Wyland? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Move adoption resolution number 21-11. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And the motion carries. Thank you, Neil. You can stay up there um, because the um, issue on stormwater utility um, and authorizing us to move forward with legal counsel to discuss the formation of a stormwater utility was pulled. Lee, um, any particular? Yep, I just wanted to, this is kind of our first go at talking about this in public really, and I thought that we could have just a short briefing of what it is that we need to accomplish and then pass it on to legal. I don't have a problem with that, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to exp to explain what's happening. Sure, and I'm gonna let Neil do that since he's been doing a lot of the background work with Tom. One of the things we're looking at is there are really two factors here. Uh, number one, in the stormwater utility, we're trying to become a little bit more proactive in terms of our efforts. I think, as you saw uh, last year and again this year, we've had to dip into the uh, contingency fund for emergency repairs to the stormwater. Uh, in order to be proactive, uh, the other factor in here is that since the city is now, as of the 2010 census, over 10,000 people, we are going to <laughs> shortly be required to get a uh, really a, dis a discharge permit from the Department of Natural Resources for our stormwater. And as condition to get that dis discharge permit, there are additional maintenance and education efforts that we need to, uh, <clears throat> we're gonna need to undertake. So this is one method of funding those additional activities. When we look at stormwater, there is a, a fair amount of deferred maintenance uh, and uh, you know, uh, potentially Tom Zuli can comment on some of the things that the additional funds would be used for. I think significant in there though is, you know, one of, I've talked to Tom 
about the budget. We've met with the staff in River Falls because River Falls had to comply with this 10 years ago. And they started their stormwater utility about, I think, eight years ago. But some of, you know, probably one of the initial tasks is really try to inspect every stormwater catch base, every stormwater inlet, and every uh, manhole in the city to determine what the condition is to try to, you know, anticipate where repairs may be needed in the future. Uh, in other areas of concerns, we may be televising uh, some of the sections so that we're, you know, so that we're getting ahead of the game instead of responding to crises. Can I get, <clears throat> there's um, two points I want to bring out. Uh, by having to go to the stormwater, this, uh, this issue of hitting 10,000 people, I understand we now have to treat or will have to treat the water that comes out of our storm waters. Today it, it flows, but it doesn't get treated. There's some set settling basins, but from what I understand, there's a lot of infrastructure development to do over the next few years. Is that correct, Tom? What I understand, yes. Yeah. And so this is a way of starting to look at how do we fund what we're going to be required to do by the state. And as you pointed out, we've had a lot of flooding problems downtown. We've had flooding problems in different areas here. And this is another way of looking at that stormwater and saying, how do we fix some of these pretty serious problems we have? So that's why I just wanted to bring yeah. that out and make sure everybody understood what was going on. Great. So at this point, we are just authorizing um, Neil to work with um, Catherine in the development of the stormwater utility. And we should be hearing from them sometime very soon, before the end of the year. So at this point, we're just authorizing Catherine to get involved. So I'll entertain a motion. <clears throat> I move to authorize legal counsel to work with staff on an ordinance to create the stormwater utility. Second. OK, so motion is second. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Motion carries. OK. Update on the budget. Devin. Got packets out to everyone. Right. You should have all either already picked them up or they're on the <laughs> table this evening. Um, if you have questions on it, if you could let me know prior to the next meeting, public hearing, so that I can research and answer whatever questions you have. We have all but one of the taxing entity um, levies in, so as soon as I get the last one in, Neil and I get in from the county, there's some sheets in there that have estimates. We'll try to get the final numbers in there to you somehow before the, the next meeting or they'll be on the table at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. The public hearing, I believe, is at 6.50 prior to the next meeting okay. on the budget. Great. Any questions from anyone on the budget at this point? Not yet. Okay, if not, Dennis, would you like to come up and give us an update on projects, please? Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll uh, try to be brief. Um, for the most part, the projects that the city had going on as uh, public city projects have wrapped up. Um, the Mill and Overlay project is completed. Uh, Grandview Park Storm Sewer project has also been completed. That one is a little more obscure back in the woods north of the park. Um, the lakefront uh, bathhouse pathway improvements have also been completed, as well as White Camp Park pathways. So um, <laughs> I think the uh, lakefront park had some field, some site conditions. A lot of debris was uncovered when uh, the contractor was doing the work, just from the nature of the location. A lot of uh, old building footings and, and bricks and poles. And uh, White Camp Park um, had some additional, uh, a little bit of storm sewer added, so there might be a few additional costs with both projects. But we'll, uh, we can see what that looks like when the contractor submits his uh, pay request. Um, other than that, the um, Urban forestry inventory is is done or almost done. We've gotten a lot of data for from the uh, arborist that uh, we'll be putting into the software program, and so we're that's in the process. And um, the Vine Street feasibility report, we've uh, you may have noticed we've been some utilities marks, so we're taking that data and incorporating that into the report. There is a, a few a uh, fair amount of utilities in that corridor. Uh, sizable gas main on the north side of the road and a sizable uh, AT&T ducts, two of them on the south side, so that may impact recommended improvements, but uh, we're factoring that in. And uh, from private developments, there isn't a whole lot of activity, so I won't comment on it unless someone has some questions. Any questions for Dennis? <coughs> Thanks. Thanks, Dennis. 
think there's been some excellent mill and overlay work done this summer. Cooley stands out. I think the work that's been done down at Second and Vine to smooth that out has um, has turned out very well. So it's been a good summer in that regard. Okay, moving on to new business, um, amend municipal code chapter 242-10C um, with regard to the water cross connection controls. There is an ordinance um, number 19-11. Uh, I don't see Tim here to, to address it. Um, I believe the only change is to correct the section number. There was a change at it's the a, state level. It's a so. housekeeping measure just to correct the number. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Roll call vote. Yakub? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Banslow? Yes. Weiland? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Morset? Yes. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? Move to adopt. Second. It's a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 19-11, amending section 242 of the municipal code. All in favor vote aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, that gets us through our agenda. Are there communications from any alder person or items for future agendas you'd like to see? City attorney? Oh. City administrator. Oh. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Two minutes.